All right, howdy, and welcome to the new webinar by RoofingSites.com. Uh, this is uh, something that's near and dear to my heart. This is the new SEO rules, right? Uh, how Google has changed the rules on us yet again. And of course, they do that all the time. They continually change, so there's no secret to that. They actually change on average about 600 some something times per year. There are typically four to five major algorithm changes. We're going to go over a lot of things and some of the basics of SEO, what I know of in my past experience uh, of 23 years, I think, in doing search engine optimization. My name is Chris Hunter. I am the uh, chief marketing officer of roofingsites.com. We put on webinars like this once a month just to share our knowledge within the roofing industry uh, to help you out. Okay. All right. So let's talk about these new SEO rules. Actually, before we get started, what I would like to share a little story, okay? Um, I first started um, doing search engine optimization a really, really long time ago, all right? Um, in 1998, I ranked my first website, okay? So that really, really dates me. It was actually ranked on yahoo.com, not Google, because Google didn't really exist. Um, when Google came around, I started paying a little bit more attention to that, and I ranked that website. I ranked my my freelance website. Uh, I was a freelance web designer at that time, and I wanted to beat my competition online. Now, when I got out of the Air Force and started my business, that was the the first thing that I, I did when I moved here to College Station, Texas. That's where we're based out of. The first order of business was to create a website and outrank my competition, Okay. Um, so I looked at what they did, uh, generally what they were doing on, on their site and just basically outdid them. It took about six months or so, and I was able to outrank them and I started getting leads in. Okay. So that was pretty cool. Um, now I sat back and I, I said, you know what, if I can rank one website, what's to keep me from ranking another one, building another website and ranking that. So I did that. And about six months later after that, I, we started ranking for that website. Okay. Um, and really I just kept kind of doing that and wash, rinse, repeat kind of a thing until I had completely driven my competition 100% off of the front page. Right. And something magical happened when that, when, when that happened, I started getting a lot of phone calls and we started selling a lot of websites. Okay. Um, and the funny thing is, is that when I got calls, they would be like, didn't I just talk to you? Because they were just simply going down the list inside of Google, right? And calling the next company and they were calling and getting me. And so they kept saying, didn't I just talk to you? And I'm like, yes, yes, let's let's do for you what we've done for us, okay? So what we're gonna go over today is exactly what I did back then and really how we've adjusted to what we do now. Okay. Um, because it's more important to do what's right for Google now. All right. Everybody with me. All right. If you are just hit a one, I like to do this periodically hit, a, hit some ones inside of the chat. One. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. All right. So this is what we're going to cover. Okay. How to get them ranked for most profitable keywords. Number two, how to build authority to your website and more important to the pages on your website, how to build relevant links that move the needle inside of Google. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you a link to our internal SEO checklist. Okay. Super important kind of thing, stuff to do. And then if we have time, I really, really hope we have some time on this and I don't talk too much. Um, we're going to audit a few websites. Okay. Y'all ready? Give me one if you're still here. Oh, and by the way, congratulations to you for showing up to this webinar because here's the deal, and I've been hammering this for the past couple of webinar, webinars, is that it is super important to work on your business and not get stuck in the day-to-day -day stuff in your business, okay? So by being here today, by actually showing up, right, it's super important. So congratulations to you. You are currently right now working on your business. So that's, that's really good. Okay. All right. So who am I? Uh, my name is Chris Hunter. I'm the chief marketing officer of roofingsites.com. Uh, we are based in college station, Texas. Uh, I am the father of three. You can see the, uh, three 
uh, children that I have here along with my wife, uh, I have an Eagle Scout. Uh, that's the one in the middle. He is about to graduate uh, high school and head off to college. Uh, the scout on the far right there is uh, uh, Matthew, and he is about to become an Eagle Scout himself. He's really, really close. And then Emma, our youngest, uh, right in the middle. So um, we, I start, well, I already talked about this. We, I started search engine optimization in 1998, okay? I've been doing this a really, really long time. And it, really, Google has changed, but not a whole heck of a lot, okay? Um I'm on a mission to double the size of 100 roofing companies by 2028. And a random fact about me, I rode my bike from Bryan College Station, this is College Station, Texas right here, uh, to Washington, D.C. in 2012 to raise money and awareness for pancreatic cancer, which is what my father passed from in 2009. Um, that was a, a grueling, grueling bike ride. It was solo. Uh, I did have a uh, my father-in-law went along with me as my support and gear. Okay. All right. Everyone with me still? Everyone give me one. You're going to like this uh, coming up here. Give me one in the chat if you're ready. Awesome. Awesome. Get those ones, ones, ones. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. So let's talk about real quick about the 4-Hour Roofer Marketing System. What is this? This is a an evergreen system that I have built over the past 20 years of digital marketing. Okay. This is something that, in, and I say it's an evergreen system because as stuff start, stops working in one of the four pillars, okay, we, we simply replace it with something that is working. Okay. So the four pillars are simple reputation, right? Your reputation is your, your very base of everything in front of more people today than knew about you yesterday. Resell. Well, you're eight times more likely to resell to somebody who has purchased from you before, but yet no roofing companies actually have a system for this, okay? And referral. Most businesses are built off of referrals, but yet as a, a company scales, right, as they get bigger, it's really, really hard to keep that referral system kind of going, all right? But we have figured out all of the things in each one of these pillars for our roofers. And what we're going to talk about today is just a small portion of that search engine optimization. Okay. Getting ranked on Google. So why should you rank? Right. I talked about it earlier, but um, Google really is the most important thing out there right now still and has been for the past 20 years. Sure. There are other things like, you know, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and LinkedIn and all of those things. And I'm not saying that those things are not important, but I'm a huge believer in the 80-20 rule, right? Uh, Pareto's law, that 20% of your efforts are going to result in 80% of your revenue, okay? Or results. And in this case, search engine optimization and ranking on Google is the most important thing that you can put into place for your business for the long term. Ads are quick and easy, but they don't produce the same results that being ranked on Google does organically. Okay. All right. Oh, I completely forgot that title. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this next thing, right? I run across roofers all the time that still advertise in the yellow pages. This phone, right? This thousand dollar machine that sits in everybody's pocket has completely replaced the yellow pages. When I first went into business, yellow pages, every single person that, that I talked with, you know, at the chamber of commerce or whatever, they're like, oh, well, I'm advertising in the yellow pages. I don't need, you know, to be ranked. And, but yet over the years, right, I noticed how, more important and more emphasis that Google was was getting, right? And where the leads, where the calls, where the phone calls were coming from. And really fast forward to about, um, what was it, 2015, I think, okay? And I, I had a client of mine who was just adamant, right? He was adamant about that the yellow pages were where his leads were coming from. And I said, okay, well, let's put your money where your mouth is. Let's, I'm going to bet you $100 that SEO is outperforming your yellow pages ads in one year's time. Okay. I could track the, the, the leads coming in from search engine optimization, right? That was easy. 
what was harder was trying to figure out the yellow pages. So here's what we did. I gave my client a tracking number to put in his yellow page ads. Okay. And a tracking number is just simply something that sits in between your phone and everything else. Okay. So they, if you put a phone number inside of, um, you know, the yellow pages or, or a billboard or whatever, right. Then you can track how many phone calls that you got at the end of whatever period of time that you're looking at. In this case, it was a year because that's, you know, back then the, the yellow page guys would come, the salespeople, right. Would come by and, uh, try to talk you into spending more every year. Okay. So this client did this and he got back with me right after that year. And I, and, uh, and I said, okay, how, how many phone calls do you think that you got? Right. And he's like, Oh, I don't know, probably two or 3000, you know, lane, uh, you know, phone calls. So I showed him the exact stats on it. All right. I want everyone to put in what, what do you think? What, what do you think that, that this guy got, right? That this company got, put it into the chat, if you will. How many, how many leads? 200. Katie says 200. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Is that the only guess? 150 from Alexis. Okay. All right. Cool. Ross has heard this story, so he's not allowed to, uh, to, to vote here. Okay. So, he had zero, zero phone calls in one year, zero phone calls. And you know how much he was spending? He was spending $6,000 per month with the yellow pages in his area. So he totally threw out the window $72,000 that he could easily apply towards Google ads. He could apply towards search engine optimization. And really that's what, that was a prime example there of that the yellow pages are completely dead. Okay. Everybody type in a one if you're still with me on this one. All right. How many people are shocked at that? Zero phone calls. I was not. Okay. So let's talk about proof and I'm going to go through this super, super quick. All right. Here are a few screenshots of some of the, the, the things that our rankings, right. Of what we got for our, our clients as well as ourselves right now. I took these this morning. Okay. So if in this case, uh, this client has on first place, they have 2,111, uh, keywords, right. Basically landing pages. Um, and grand total on first page is 3,149, right. Pretty cool. Right. And by the way, most SEO companies will give you 10 to 20. Okay. And think that that's good. All right. Um, most of our clients get, uh, we start at 400 and we move upwards from there um, every single quarter and we keep building and building and building. Okay. So in this case, uh, 1,748 in the first place of Google and on the first page over on the right, you're going to notice uh, 2,693. In this case, it was 1,561 in first place and on the first page, uh, 2,537. Okay, uh, 985 in the first place and uh, 1,294 um, in uh, the first page. Okay. Okay, so how do you get results like this? All right, so this is exactly what we're going to talk about here, right? And this is the fun part. I'm an SEO geek. Obviously, I've been doing it a long time. And the reason that I showed those results was, was to illustrate that, you know, what we do works. And, it, and it, it's worked for the past 20 years, really. You know, our recipe has not changed a whole, whole lot, okay, in that amount of time. But we do have to make tweaks to it here and there, okay, because Google does change all the time. Okay, so let's talk about EAT, okay? EAT was uh, an acronym that was uh, put out by Google, I don't know, maybe about a couple of years ago, and it was EAT, and they talk about it all the time. If you want to rank on Google, you need to have expertise. That's the first E, um, and, I'll, and I'll get to that top one here in a second, okay? Expertise, A is authority, and T is trustworthiness, okay? And expertise is simple. Are you an expert in your area? A authority. Do you have authoritative 
links coming back to your website, right? And that's really what it comes down to. And T for trustworthiness are those links trustworthy? Is your website trustworthy, right? So if you get those those three things right, you're pretty much going to outrank your competition, okay? The fourth one, E, the first E for experience, this is new. This is something that was um, uh, first introduced, I don't know, maybe at this point about five, six months ago um, by Google. And this came out with the um, helpful content update that algorithm change that, that you know, happened at, at the beginning of the year, end of the year timeframe. Okay, so experience um, means simply how do your visitors, how is your experience on the website? Okay, are they actually engaging with your content or not? And if they are, Google's going to reward you a little bit. Okay, so these are the four main areas that we need to concentrate on here. Okay, now the brand new thing to all of this now is what we're going to talk about next. AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, Google um, has, has been working on this for years and years and years, right? Um, this was, uh, you know, introduced really a, two, three years ago that they, that they had an artificial intelligence, uh, factor behind their algorithm. Okay. There's still all sorts of things, you know, that, that matter things like, you know, backlinks, things like, like the trustworthy of net, those back backlinks, the, the, all sorts of different factors, right? If you talk to any SEO, you're going to get about 10 different stories of what all the factors are. Okay. However, AI has come along and it's kind of changing the scene. All right. Um, they have, uh, an AI engine back behind everything. And in fact, if you paid attention to the news, you'll, you'll notice that, um, Google laid off for the first time ever, they laid off thousands of people, right? And in the end SEO industry, we think that is possibly because of this AI, right? Yes. The, the economy factors into a lot of things, but they're printing their own money with Google ads, right? With the whole Google ads engine, they could continue funding all of these people pretty easily. However, I think that with artificial intelligence being more and more prevalent in our, our society and in, in marketing and in search engine optimization, things have changed a little bit, okay? So what do we know about that right now? Not much, honestly. Google always holds a lot of things back. They don't, they don't tell us everything. And in fact, a lot of the stuff that they tell us is, in my mind, uh, mis misinformation. Okay. Uh, things like black hat and white hat and, and, and things like, um, you know, that we shouldn't worry about disavowing, um, you know, links and, and, and stuff like that. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that they tell us the community, right? The SEO community. And I think it throws a lot of people off because they're not truly testing these things. They're not truly testing everything. So we're testing artificial intelligence right now. We've been, I did a webinar last month about it. Um, you can go to YouTube and, and, and go watch that webinar if you want to, but, um, we're using AI here at rivingsites.com. Okay. We use it to speed up our processes. We use it to help us, um, with certain things. Should you use AI to write blog articles or landing pages? No. I would not do that at this point, right? Um, and the reason I say that is because I was around in 2012 and 2011 when the major algorithm changes came, Penguin and Panda, right? Those things came along and shook up the entire industry. And I'm seeing now what happened back then, meaning that um, people are going out and they're using ChatGPT to write articles, okay? ChatGPT, uh, however, has... It, it leaves a signature, okay? And it's an easily identifiable signature, especially by another artificial intelligence being, right? Or software, whatever you want to call it, okay? It can easily figure out that this is AI written content. Eventually, and this is my prediction, eventually Google's going to slap all of the, that from happening, okay? They want content that is helpful all right, first of all, to your visitors, they want content that is meaningful. And sometimes when you have chat GPT or any of the other AI tools write something for you, it doesn't always come out 
the best. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that there. We do use chat GPT. We do use all sorts of other um, AI tools, but we are not using it to write blogs or landing pages themselves. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to leave that there. Okay. So let's talk about my recipe, right? This is the roofing ranking machine. This is something, this is my recipe of what has worked over the past 20 plus years for ranking websites. Okay. So it first starts, I'm going to get my handy dandy little pen here. First starts right here with landing pages. Okay. The very first thing that you should do is create landing pages on your website. All right. We use, if you notice, WordPress, and that's simply because WordPress is the most popular content management system out there. It's really popular, by the way, with Google because Google themselves, right, the, the parent company of Google, right, um, Alpha, I think, is, is their name. Okay, so they have invested into Automatic, which is the parent company of WordPress, that should tell you something right there of what you should use. Should it be Squarespace, Wix, or w WordPress? Definitely WordPress in my opinion. Okay, so we build every website off of WordPress. We build landing pages, and then we start adding blog articles, right, on a monthly basis. For all of our clients, they get four of these every single month. And here's why. So inside of this article, we have links that go to various landing pages. Okay. And then when we write the blog and we share it out to the socials, okay, uh, to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Google uh, business profile, all of those things, what it does, and I'm going to draw this out here. I'm a horrible drawer with my mouse. So bear with me, right? This is supposed to be a spider. Here we go. Here's two eyes and a mouth. I know they got way more eyes than that. Anyways. So what happens is that the search engine spiders will find that content, all right? Twitter right now is hooked directly into Google. And they have been for the past, I don't know, six, seven years. So what happens is that when we share this and we share it to Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, we're giving it all sorts of really cool social signals. But most importantly, we are attracting the search engine spider, okay? So the spider is just simply software that will come and go from one link to another link to another link to another link. Okay. Just like a regular spider would on a, on a, on a web. Okay. We do this within minutes because we call this jiggling the web. This is something that I learned from a guy early two thousands. Uh, his name is Michael Campbell and I was in his mastermind group uh, for search engine optimization. He called this technique jiggle the web. Okay. And it worked really, really well back then. And it still works today. All right. So um, the idea is that search engine spiders are just like regular spiders. So when they, when they, um, in a regular net or not net web, right. Uh, a spider can, can sense exactly where, what strand is jiggling. Okay. When a, when a fly, uh, flies into the web, let's say. Okay. So his process back then was to make sure that, that these websites right? We're hooked into Google and we let Google know right away that this is the way to come back to the website. And when it does that, it's going to spider the links that, by the way, go back to many, many landing pages. Okay. I'm going to draw a couple of different arrows out here to illustrate multiple landing pages, not just one landing page. Okay. Okay. So just this process right here can easily rank your website. Now, how do you supercharge that? Okay. You supercharge it by then link using a network of websites. Okay. This is typically guest blogs. Okay. When you, when you uh, put your content out there, okay, these, these articles and you share them out on to other websites or you write new content and you share them out on other websites and they link back to your website. That's how you build a powerful backlink network, okay? Next thing is right here, what I call branded links. These are citations these days. These are links that are on directories. These are links that, that then just simply link back to the homepage of your website, okay? So these are the powerful links. These are also powerful, but we always link back to the website in, in those types of um, 
those types of links. Okay. So citations, these are like directories like Yelp and Facebook and, and even Google business profile used to be Google my business, right? All of those places list your, your name, address, phone number, and your website. Okay. Make sure your website is exactly the same. So if it's HTTPS dot, you know, forward slash, forward slash www.roofingsites.com, make sure that that's what is in every single one of those directory uh, citations. Okay. And all we do is do this every single month. Okay. We add more articles and add more landing pages on a quarterly basis. We add 400 landing pages to every single one of our clients every single quarter, okay? Everybody with me on this? It's just simply wash, rinse, and repeat once you get this system up in place. Give me one if you are still with me. Did I geek out too much? Do you have any questions on this? Got one, one. Awesome, awesome. Cool, all right, so I'm going to try to clear my drawings and we are going to move on from here so this is basically the recipe that we've used we've we've tweaked things here and there um and in fact uh this network over here right these power links we now use a network of uh news websites to syndicate our our articles out to so similar to this over here uh but we we then you know use like fox and and um, Fox News type websites, you know, all of the local um, uh, syndic syndications need content. And if we give them um, helpful content for them and their viewers, right, to consume on their website, then they reward us by letting us put a link back in. So anyways, it's, that's a super powerful technique. All right, so let's get into a um, couple of other things here. Okay. So in my opinion, SEO, search engine optimization, ranking on Google specifically, comes down to two things, links and content. And it has for the past 20 plus years, okay? Again, nowadays, we also have a third piece there, which is engagement, right? And that's, that's where are your blog articles getting shared out? Are they getting liked on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and stuff like that? You can, you could fake that, but it's really hard to fake that. So I think that's why Google has uh, put that into their whole algorithm, you know, uh, base. Okay. So let's talk now about what a landing page is. We talked about it, but we didn't really go into specifics. All right. A landing page is in my mind, keyword plus location. Okay. So let's say uh, roofing company, college station. Roofer College Station, um, Roofing Brian, right? Roofing Company Brian, Texas, right? Those are all different landing pages, in my opinion. And when I see SEOs and, and a lot of roofing companies, what they'll do is they'll put a one single page for roofing, you know, on their entire website, and then keyword stuff all of the locations inside of that page. That's just the wrong way to go about this, okay? The right way is to create a singular page that matches up with the keyword plus the location for each one of those, okay? Make sense to everybody? Give me one in the chat if you're with me on that. Any questions on what a landing page actually is? We're going to go over here in a second what the structure needs to be, okay? So what is that structure? I obviously have my things backwards here. All right. So, so here's, here's the structure for a landing page. Number one, you have to have a title. Okay. Um, the title is typically the first H1 on the page. What is an H1? That's a heading one tag. Okay. This is what you are telling. This is one of the biggest signals to Google of what your website, what your web page, sorry, is about. Okay. So if it's about roofing company college station, okay, then that should be right top H, the very first H1 that the Google spiders get to. Okay. Next is in the introduction, this introduction paragraph, you want to make sure that you include your keyword as close to, as possible to the very front of the paragraph. Okay. And I like to use, um, you know, like, Hey, are you looking for roofing company in college station? That's typically what, what we put in that very first, uh, paragraph. Okay. Um, number two, 
All right, it's actually number three. Uh, have an image in there, okay? And here's here's one of the hacks that that we use here is that this is not just an image. This isn't just a stock photo. This is your image. This is from your roofers, okay, that, that are going out and taking pictures on job sites. Because guess what? Google and uh, Apple, right, both of those, the Android and, and the iOS, they embed the location inside of every single picture that you take. It's kind of creepy. However, that the the latitude and longitude are embedded in the metadata for each one of those pictures. So if you put a, a true image, your image that you took of, of a roof, right, being either worked on or of, of the end result, doesn't matter which one, okay, from somewhere in College Station, Texas, guess what? Google is going to go, hey, that image was in College Station, Texas. And then if you name it Roofing Company College Station, and you put in the alt tags, right? And in WordPress, it's real easy to do this. It, it literally says alt when you upload an image. You simply put in uh, image of roofing company in College Station, Texas, okay? Um, you put all of those things together to really optimize that that first image that, that Google is going to see. Then number four, you give it some uh, supporting paragraphs. Uh, I, I use the AIDA model, attention, interest, desire, action, um, you know, for pretty much any, any kind of one of these landing pages. Okay. Um, if you're not sure what that is, just look it up. It's real easy model to, to go through. Um, but, uh, uh, and then you want to put your secondary keyword. You might have a secondary keyword. So roofer would be a secondary keyword in, in this case, right? So roofing company and roofer in college station, um, Put those in the H2s and the H3s, right? Those are heading twos and heading threes through kind of sprinkled throughout the, the page itself. You want to have some more images, some more of the images that you took, okay, that your staff took from all of the different areas that you are servicing, okay? Put those in on this page. Uh, put even more paragraphs in there, right? Uh, including uh, NLP and relevant contextual keywords, right? Um these are just basically different keywords, right? Like I just I just said, right? Roofer, roofing company, right? Um, roofing firm, right? Whatever. I don't know. There's there's like a million of these things. Okay, put those, mix those in there, kind of sprinkle them in. Okay, don't make it to where you put roofing company, college station, you know, a hundred times in 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 that that text because Google's not really going to like that. It's called keyword stuffing. Okay. Have an outro with a call to action. I love call to actions. Okay, this this is things like, um, you know, it, if if you need help with your roofing, call, you know, whatever your phone number is. Okay, uh, and and put those in. I like them in headings. Okay, so H twos and H threes uh, for that. Put your meta title and your meta description in on that page. Don't worry too much about the actual description itself. Google threw that out a long time ago as a ranking factor. However, what I'd like to do on the description is make sure that, yes, it does include the keyword, but it matches the search, okay? The searcher's intent. So if someone does a search for a roofing company in College Station, the very first sentence, right, inside of the meta description says, are you searching for um, roofing company in College Station? great. We'd love to help you. Um, and this is where you put a little bit more about yourself. You're limited on the amount of key, um, uh, characters that you can put in there nowadays. Um, so just keep it short and sweet, add your phone number and add a click here to learn more. Okay. So just to get them because that meta description now is just simply what is shown on the Google search engine result page. And if you add a call to action to that meta description, it actually calls them to actually click through into the website, which by the way, might also be a ranking factor of click through rates, right? Off of their pages, because they want to present the best results that they possibly can to their users. Okay. Add the keyword inside of the title of the meta title itself. Um, this is what shows up in the tab, um, you know, or actually in the typically the the text on the search engine result page on the SERP. Okay, um, so roofing company and college station. Make sure that that is in the, in the meta title. That's really easy to do inside of um, um, inside of WordPress. Okay, 
Next one is include one to two internal links and external links. Okay, so internal links, let's talk about that. What I like to do is link to the next page in the series. So if it's, if it's roofing company in College Station, I'm going to link to somewhere in there, roofing company in Bryan, Texas, roofing company in Hearn. These are all little, uh, well, Bryan is a pretty big city, bigger city here uh, in, in the Bryan College Station area. Uh, but uh, Hearn is a little bit smaller of, of an out, outlier, right? But it's all within the roofing company service area, okay? So we're going to link to all of those those different uh, pages uh, that way. External links, these are things like NRCA, RCAT, any, any association that you are, um, you know, involved with, put that link in there, put an image, you know, uh, and, and put that link going out there. That proves the trustworthiness and then the authority of this page to Google. Okay. It's like, oh, they're members of the NRCA. They need to be ranked above these other people who, who, you know, don't have those links. Okay. And make sure that you link to your actually actual directory listing. We do on our website. If you go to roofingsites.com and scroll all the way down, I don't know, about three quarters of the way down, you'll see our associations that we are involved with. That's the NRCA, RCAT, HARCA, and we are also a veteran owned business. Okay. So all of those link out to the places that prove, Hey, this is the proof, right. Of our, that we are members of this association. Okay. Um, use whatever. So I, I didn't talk about this, but when I first start to try to rank a website, I first want to go and audit all of the pages that are ranking now, right? I mentioned that in my story earlier, that that's what I did. Now I do the same thing. We go and look, we do an audit for your competitors and see, you know, do each of their landing pages that are ranking, how, how, how many words do they have on that page? right? Or do they have images? Do they have videos? Do they have, you know, certain things that, that might be helping them to rank on those pages. Okay. Put those in your pages because guess what? Search engine optimization is literally king of the hill, right? If you, if you ever played that game as a kid, I know I loved it on the jungle gyms, right? You, you try to knock your, your competitors off uh, of the jungle gym and, and you'd, you'd be placed up there. Search engine optimization is the exact same thing. You have to do outdo your competition in every point that you possibly can, whether that's backlinks, whether that is on-page search engine optimization, whether that is putting in images like I'm talking about, right, to uh, show Google what your service area is, anything like that. You want to make sure that you're putting that kind of stuff in, okay? Infographics, charts, you'll, you'll see here, I've got a few ideas. You also want to match how many words or actually outdo how many words that they've got on those pages, okay? If they've got 1,000, I would put 2,000. If they've got 500, I'd put 1,000, okay? Um, match that as best as you can and outdo them. Now, last one, use tools to make this all easier. There's all sorts of tools out there, um, and, and we can go into that later in the Q&A, and I can show you some, some of those tools. Everybody with me so far? This is a long list. Super important stuff to do on every single page on your website. Give me one if you're still with me. Awesome. Awesome. Is this valuable? Give me give me a two. I'm going to give you a different number here. Give me a two if, if this is valuable to you. Awesome. Two, two, two. Good, good. All right. So how do we actually go about doing search engine optimization? Okay. One, before I even get into the actual nuts and bolts, right? We've gone over the page structure. We've gone over what to do. No. And remember this, this comes in from that story from earlier. This is a process. This is like dieting. Okay. This is something that you do today that is going to affect you six months from now. Right. If you're, if your SEO is on point, maybe it affects us three months from now or even better. Sometimes it for the longer tail keywords, right. It will affect you really, really quickly. Right. So here's what we do. We, this is my recommendation on, and this is exactly what we do here at roofingsites.com. All right. Number one, build your service and location pages. Okay. That's, we've, we've talked in, in length about this and we, we just told you how to structure those pages, build those things first. Okay. Number two, speed up your website, get good hosting. Don't put it on something like godaddy.com. Their, their, their hosting is horrible. Okay. Get something good like, like WP engine. 
Okay. They, they focus on, um, hosting websites, uh, that are, sorry, they, they, they focus on hosting WordPress websites. Okay. There's a couple of others out there. Um, we have one that um, is was actually built by Buddy Mind in, in in a mastermind group that I'm in because he got tired of WP Engine and some of the other um, hosting companies out there that were not focusing a couple of years ago on speed. Right, his team actually literally for every single one of our websites they go in if we add an image that is not optimized. Guess what? The next day they go in and optimize that that image. Right, so make it super super fast. Okay, so. My point here is get rid of the cheap hosting, get rid of the $10 a month, $5 a month packages, spend the money on the $50 a month packages. Okay. That's what we do for our clients. And I highly, highly recommend that you do it because the second that we did that, we started skyrocketing all of our rankings. You know, it's not that our hosting uh, was bad before, but they, by going onto a super fast service, it has massively helped rankings. Okay. Build number three, build backlinks. Okay. These are citations, um, you know, things like Google and Yelp and, and, and Facebook and anywhere that, you know, there, there's all sorts of directories that you can go and put your, um, you know, your information in that will link back to your website. Pay attention in the roofing industry to the local, national, and regional associations. Okay. So here in Texas, we've got RCAT. Uh, Roofing Contractors Association of Texas. We've also got, since we're near Houston, we joined HARCA, which is the Houston Area Roofing Contractors Association. Okay. So we have links from both of those websites that link back to us. Okay. We have our name, address, and phone number exactly the same as it is inside of Google in there as well. Okay. This provides huge signals to Google that you are an expert, an authority, and trustworthy. Okay. Um, Next one, and this is kind of a secret, okay? This is what I, I tell people sometimes is, is that, hey, there are typically organizations around your area that you want to get links back from, okay? You definitely want the, the easy ones like Chamber of Commerce, Better Business Bureau, okay? Whatever other organizations that you're involved in with, maybe that's Rotary or maybe that is um, uh, Kiwanis or, or something like that, right? Get, get a link to your website from that page to yours. Okay. And the secret one are sponsorships. Okay. If let's say that you donate money to the local little league, make sure that you get a link from that local little leagues page to your page. Okay. Put your logo on there and link back to your home page with that. Okay. That provides massive, massive, massive signals. I had a client that did this um, and he sponsored the, we're, we're here in College Station, which is the home of Texas A&M University. He sponsors and still does it to this day and outranks all of his competition with this one backlink. Okay. He sponsors the, um, the, the biking, uh, Aggie Biking uh, Club. Okay. And on their website, which by the way is an .edu, right? Uh, his little banner links back to his, his, uh, his homepage. That's all he has to do. That literally is beyond the onsite SEO. That is the only backlink that he has ever gotten other than chamber of commerce and better business bureau and all that kind of stuff. And it, it just has always amazed me that he outranks all of his competition. And by the way, he is a, um, criminal lawyer here in, in college station, there's probably about, he's competing with probably about 200 criminal lawyers, right? Just for that top spot. And he kills them all with that one backlink. So super, super important thing to do. Create blogs that link back to the service and location pages, right? Do this on a regular basis. We talked about this already, but do this for all of our clients. We do four per month because that's just, a, it seems to be the sweet spot. Um, two is okay. Um, but four is better. You, you, if you really, really are in a competitive area like, uh, I don't know, DFW <laughs> that has like 2,000 roofing companies in that area, right, um, then you might need to put a little bit more into it and, and part of that little bit more might be more blogs, okay? Mm -hmm. When we have had a hard time ranking sites, we throw more blogs, more content to, at Google, more search engine spider food at Google, and it they reward us typically uh, by by ranking in those those more competitive areas. In between that and also better backlinks, okay? Share blogs on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. 
Instagram, Google business profile at a minimum. Okay. So meaning that when you publish them on your site, you're then going and sharing them out on all of these social networks. Again, that's to get that, those search engine spiders to your website. Okay. And this is our secret. We syndicate those blogs on news websites. Okay. That's been a game changer by doing that right there. Okay. Do all of this in this order. That's my recommendation. Any questions on that? All right. No questions. All right. That's fine. Unless you're still typing. You might be typing. Feel free to unmute yourself, by the way, here. Okay. No questions. All right. So here is... Here it is. Are y'all ready? You want to do some SEO aud audits, live audits? I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. All right. Anyone want to get their website audited? And I know y'all roofers hate the word audit. Don't worry about it. It's not the IRS audit. It's not any kind of other audit. This is just me doing a search engine optimization audit. All right. Katie says yes. And so go ahead and uh, put your website in there and we'll pull it open. Open Google, throw it in here. You'll see my my uh, Chrome. And Katie, you said yes. Go ahead and just throw your website into the uh, chat, if you will, or unmute yourself, and I can I can type it in. I think you said you're in Wichita, right? Here's the true. All right. Okay. Good, good. Okay. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to open up a few tools here. Uh, my favorite tool is majestic.com. I use this to audit um, the backlink profile. Okay. Um, okay. Next, I'm going to open up a few Google tools. Okay. The two tools here, actually three tools. My website is, my computer is chugging. It does not like this. <laughs> Did I freeze on y'all? Hopefully not. Okay. My computer is not liking Zoom plus Google. Okay, good. I'm not frozen. All right. Thanks, Ross. All right, cool. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your website, okay? Um, all right, so what I'm looking for here are uh, a few things. One, um, and actually I'm going to grab this and put it into a few tools, and we'll get to those. It's going to test, and I'm going to leave them going while it does this, okay? Um, okay, so let's go back to your website. Number one, roofing installation and replacement, Wichita, Kansas. Perfect. That's exactly what you want. Okay. Um, you know, if if you want to further fine tune that roofing company, right? Um, Wichita, Kansas would be the number one keyword I would put in there um, for the website, for the homepage, sorry. Um, and that's just simply because that's what is the most searched for keyword. Okay. So you want to rank on your front page for the most searched for keyword in your area. Okay. And we just know that because, you know, we do tons of ads. We, we the very first number one on every single one of the ads that search keyword is roofing company. Okay. Or roofer. Those one of those two words right there. Okay. So I would change the title. Um, let me see, scroll down through here. I like the website. 
Um, okay, so recommendations is, you know, those interior pages, those keyword plus ser uh, service pages, right? I don't necessarily see those here. And that doesn't mean that they don't exist, but if I can't find them, if I'm not, if I'm going through and, and looking at the website, I don't see a site map down here. That's one of the things that I would highly recommend is, is put a, a link to your site map down in the bottom. And that way Google can get to every single one of the pages on your website, right? Because if you don't link to it, it can't find it. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the roofing installation page. Let me go to the plain roofing page. Nope. It doesn't want to go. So that's not a real page it's on that link. Okay. So I would, I would make that a link and make that go to roofing uh, in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Um, but this one, let's talk about this one. All right. This is an interior page roofing and installation replacement, Wichita, Kansas. That's the same exact keyword, by the way, that was on the, uh, that y'all were looked like you were uh, optimizing for, for the homepage. Um, so you might have some co conflict there, you know, with Google, they might be going, okay, well, which one is the right page I should rank? Is it this page or the homepage? Okay. So, um, make the homepage roofing company then, uh, and we're, you know, this page, the roofing installation and replacement. Okay. So what I like to use here is a little tool called SEO menu. Okay. And this is just a little, um, plugin that that installs it's free uh you can install it on your website uh, sorry on in chrome um and they have this little tool right here where it says analyze on page seo okay you can go to any page on the internet and and check all sorts of cool things like right here you have 861 oops don't click on it you have 861 words okay 10,602 keywords um your type this is your title this is your description right um i like it I like the description, call us for a roofing. I would, in, instead of call us, because there's no phone number right there, I would say, click here for more information. Get them to come to the page, okay? Uh, inside of the meta descriptions. Um, H1, H2, H3s, we can show all of the headings this way, okay? So um, roofing installation, if that is what we are, are wanting to be ranked on, I would definitely have H2s and H3s that, that um, also say roofing installation and replacement, right? Um, I don't see an H1, right? So remember that was the, that should be this one right here. This should be an H1 tag. Okay. And the rest should be H2s and H3s because semantically, right? Uh, the way that, that HTML was originally built, and I'm going to geek out here in a, uh, for a second, the way that HTML was originally built was semantically that the H1 tells everybody what that page is about and the h2s and h3s are supporting uh that that h1 okay um if so for instance if you want to be this page to be known for roofing installation and replacement right in wichita kansas by the way it's missing that okay then that this should be an h1 okay of roofing installation and replacement and then i would have an h2 of roofing installation in in can um wichita kansas and then an H, another H2 down further down the page, roofing replacement in, in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And actually, in my opinion, roofing installation is one keyword. Roofing replacement is a separate keyword. Okay. So those should be two different pages. All right. Um, and, and Google re will reward you by, by saying, okay, well, if someone types in roofing installation, they're going to send them to the roofing installation page, roofing replacement, then roofing replacement will be another page. Does that make sense? Give me one if, if that makes sense. Cool. Okay. Um, you know, make sure that, that you've got, um, you know, supporting text that also has, um, you know, those, those keywords in it. Right, so uh, down through here, you want to sprinkle in, and you have here roof replacement, right? But uh, where is roof um, installation, right? So you want to have that, and here you go. In this paragraph, we got that, um, so that's good. All right, these images look like uh, not stock photos, so that's good. Um, are these stock photos? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so I would replace those. 
again, with those, those images that you're forming are, are taking with their iPhones or Androids. Okay. Um, replace those to give the, the signals to Google. Um, these are all good. These are all good. Definitely replace all of these images. I like, I like this serving. Um, we're in a, that's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> totally cool. Um, serving Wichita, Kansas, your hours, contact us, make sure that this matches your listing on Google business profile. Okay. So I'm going to go and search your company. Vintage exterior owners, Wichita, Kansas. Okay. So when I say, uh, you know, your, your name, address, and phone number, right? Your citations throughout the internet, you want to make sure that it matches up exactly with this. And it starts with your website. Okay. So for instance, 335 or sorry, 3351 West Central Avenue with a dot, right? We have the same thing here, West Central Ave, right? Yep. Without a dot though on the Google business profile. So take the dot out on this right here. Okay. Uh, Wichita, Kansas. That's good. And 67203. 67203. Good. Make sure that this number matches up with the phone number that is listed here. 316-706-5788. Uh, nope. Different phone number. Okay. So let's make sure that that matches up also down over here. Okay. Does that make sense? We're, what we're trying to do is, is match everything up to give Google the, the signals, um, that, uh, you belong in this area. If something is off, right. They don't know how to rank you. Okay. So make sure that all of that stuff works or is the same. Okay. So that's kind of an on page, really quick audit. Uh, does that make sense? Make sure you just go through that checklist. If, and, and in fact, uh, Ross, go ahead and throw the, the link to the checklist in. We'll get to here in a minute. But if you go to seochecklist.roofingsites.com, um, you'll you'll be able to download our checklist that we use internally for every single website. Okay, uh, that should be able to help you do all of this internal auditing that you need to do. Okay, next is um, your Google Business Profile. You want to make sure these days these two things go together. Okay, I don't do search engine optimization, i.e., uh, rank in the, or try to get ranked in the organic area, which is right here. Okay. Um, I don't try to get ranked there without trying to get ranked on the Google, my business for any website. Okay. They are both together. They're both symbiotic. So we want to make sure that this is optimized as much as you possibly can. So with that being said, um, let's look at that real quick. All right. There are a few things that I see here. Okay. Um, first of all, let's add your services. This would be all of your services, including, you know, gutters, siding, windows, doors, roofing replacement, uh, roof repair. Those should be all listed right here inside of Google business profile. Okay. Um, number two, start adding your pictures. Okay. To this section, um, with all of those signals that, that you're, you're giving to Google. Let's take a second to come up. Right. Um, you have a few images here and that's great. Let's add a lot more. Like I'm talking every single job, <laughs> make sure your foreman is taking pictures of every single job. Okay. Drop them into a Google drive folder for you so that you can put them up, you know, all over the place because that's providing massive signals to Google of where your service area is. So, and, and this is part of it and a huge part of it. Okay. Um, yeah, Ross said it right. You know, we shoot for a hundred plus photos at least, right? If you're doing a hundred plus jobs per year, you need a hundred plus photos on your website, inside of Facebook, inside of Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, my business, Google business profile right here. Um, Instagram, all of those places provide massive signals that, Hey, this is, this is our service area, Google, right? And they reward you by ranking you. Okay. Um, the other thing that we do with, with all of ours, uh, number, well, here, here's the other big ranking factor right here is getting more Google reviews. Okay. Um, I noticed I did a, a, an audit a couple of years ago of a thousand different roofing companies. And I went through the, the, the top roofing companies, uh, listed on roofingcontractor.com. 
I went through every single one of their websites, their, their Facebooks, their, their Google business profiles. Back then it was Google My Business. We went through all of that stuff. And what I noticed is that the folks that were ranking the most, I'm sorry, the folks that were, um, had a higher revenue were ranking the highest and they were ranking the highest in the organic area, as well as over here on Google business in the maps. Okay. In the three pack. Okay. So when, when, when we talk about these things, right, this right here is, is called the three pack because there are three organic listings. Okay. For maps. And then they're typically sometimes, maybe not always is a, an ad. Okay. These are called local service ads right here. And typically in between the local service ads and in, in, in the maps area is typically like just regular Google ads, regular Google ads, right? Um, local service ads, you know, um, that's part of the reach. I would highly recommend that you guys uh, have that. You know, you're not here. You're not here. Um, I don't see you on the first page um, of organically you know, inside of the SEO area. So really your company doesn't exist at this point on Google and Google is the number one place to, to be. There are four spots. There's local service ads. That's these, the Google guarantee. There are ads, um, which typically is in between here, but I guess they're, they're only showing on this search right here. Um, Google maps right here, and then organic. You've got four different places to put uh, to take up space on side of the Google search engine result page. This is the most important simply because, um, simply because, right, this matches the buyer's highest buyer intent. They're literally searching for your services, right, by going to Google to try to find help, okay? They're not going to Facebook to go find that. They're not going to Instagram to go find that. Those places are important, but for the most part, I tell every go every roofer that I I come across, that I talk with, that that I help with, focus on Google first, okay? Dominate there, and then look, you know, move on to something like Facebook ads or Twitter ads or LinkedIn ads or anything like that, okay? Um, make sure you're dominating completely on Google, right? That's the number one priority. Okay, so let's look at your backlink profile. Real quick. So that your backlinks, right, are, as we talked about earlier, are super, super important, right? Make sure that that's correct. So I use this tool, majestic.com, to find what backlinks do my competitors have? What 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 backlinks do, do my, my clients have, right, before we even start out? So if you notice here, um, there, there are two factors here. Okay. You've got trust flow of two, which means you're not a very trusted website. And then a citation flow, which means the amount of, um, links that are linking to your website. Okay. If I, if I do this same thing for, I don't know, uh, I'll put in roofing contractor. Dot com. Right. That's trust flow of 25 and 47. They, they rank for a lot of stuff because they have massive backlinks that are coming back to their, their site. If I put something in even bigger, let's say facebook.com. Oh, it didn't like that. All right. I have to log in. Hang on a second. Let me pull this over here. Do my login stuff. Back over here. There we go. Okay, so if you look at facebook.com, right, we have a trust flow of 98, right, and 99. And your website had, what, a 2 and a 25, right? So um, making a priority to get those local backlinks is super important, like, like Better Business Bureau, like Chamber of Commerce, any organizations that y'all belong to whatsoever, including NRCA, whatever the, the Kansas... Uh, roofing contractors association join them get a backlink from their website to yours okay um any sponsorships anything like that just start working on getting more and more very trusted backlinks okay um all right so let's go over to our mobile friendly test uh this is a, a tool right that google uh came out with 
I don't know, three or four years ago that you can throw your website into. It'll tell you whether your website is mobile friendly or not. And that was when the algorithm shifted two or three years ago, um, you know, that basically they wanted everyone to be mobile They're, you know, they were going to a mobile first um, search engine. And so they wanted to make sure that everyone that, that they ranked was mobile. Okay. So this was a little tool that they created uh, and still maintain. So it, it, obviously it tells me that it's an important factor. Okay. But um, y'all's is uh, mobile friendly. So that's good. Um, Page speed insights. This was the other tool that they built um, that helps us to know whether your page is fast. Okay. And what's slowing it down. Okay. They built this um, prior to them uh, rolling out the algorithm change that came at the beginning of last year um, in 2022, that basically, you know, you had to have a fast website and we already went over all that. So you can use this tool to see it, um, on mobile, you have scored a 47 out of a hundred. Um, you know, there are a few things that you can do in here. It literally tells you exactly what, what to do right down over here, reduce the unused JavaScript on the web page. Um, you know, reduce on your CSS, all that kind of stuff. This is what our hosting geeks do for us. You know, they, they go through and, and optimize for us and our clients. Um, but this gives you the list of exactly what you need to do right here. Okay. Um, desktop is a little bit better, 80 out of a hundred, you know? Um, and so it, it, it tells you here also exactly what you need to do in order to, to do, um, to get it faster. Okay. Um, does this all make sense? Is this helping y'all? Awesome. Good, good, good. Okay. Um, now I use this tool to check your, your citations. Okay. Um, so basically what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go right over here to um, Google business profile, grab your address exactly as it is there. Right. And post it in here. Uh, actually, I need to grab your the street number in since I already grabbed that. Grab exactly the name that you have right here. Okay. And last thing, we're going to grab the zip code. Check it. This will take a second or two, not very long. Okay. So what this tool does is um, it checks all of these major directories. Um, and in, in this tool's mind, these are all the directories that your website should have citations for. If you use their tool, put it in there, you know, and pay for it, it'll, it'll help you list in all of these places. Okay. So this shows that you 73% of these are missing. Uh, 18% of them are incorrect and only 9% of them are correct of your citations. Okay. So we can go through here and look at them. So these are all correct hours, photos, um, and address matches up. Although this, what's funny, and I see this from time to time is that remember we were, we were saying AVE, right? And that's what shows on Google over here, but even it's right here showing that it's Avenue, you know? Um, so not sure which one to use um, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we re recreated Facebook pages and other social media, haven't linked them yet. Yeah, definitely do that um, and, you know, make that a priority if you want to rank, okay, um, to to actually do that. So all of those are, are listings not found. Um, the uh, name, so it highlights it in red what's... <laughs> what's uh, uh, missing or, or not correct. Okay. It's heritage exteriors. And remember we have her heritage exteriors and roofing and exteriors. Okay. So we want to make sure that that matches up. Um, let's go back here. Yeah. So you just go to uscity.com and you can just click on this right here and it'll take you directly to that listing. Um, Listing not found in a lot of places, Her heritage exteriors, again, in this website, iGlobal, um, where to, um, you know, so if, if you pay for this tool, I'm not sure how much it is anymore. It's, I want to say it's like $140 a year, you know, um, you just, you just get it and, and fill in the information. It'll help you, uh, claim all of these and set them up. Okay. Um, 
All right. And you're saying had a company change, it used to be heritage exteriors, and yeah, now it's a roofing and exteriors. Okay. Um, does that just need to be updated in all those places that are red? Yes, but if you use a tool like this, it'll help you do all that stuff. Okay. So what this tool does is this um submits all of these to um the major aggregators of all of these and then all of these different places pick it up eventually okay um, when i say eventually it's typically like a month down the road that they'll start picking up all of these citations okay so um this is exactly what we use in-house you know uh for all of our clients we do all this stuff for our clients so any any questions on that cool all right. Well, anyone else want to be audited? Did I did I answer most of your questions on on this? And feel free to unmute yourself if you want to. No more questions. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, it is now. <laughs> I talk way too much. Twelve eleven. Hopefully, this was valuable enough to y'all, though. Um, yeah, Alexis, do you do you want an audit? Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, let me get back to the end of my presentation here. If you want, uh, since you stayed to the end, go and go ahead to seochecklist.roofingsites.com to download the checklist that we use internally. Um, Ross, just put it into the chat. Number two, get my book. I am the author of the Ultimate Guide to Digital Marketing for Roofers. I forgot to say that at the beginning. Um, this is 336 pages of my knowledge uh, in the digital marketing industry and, and, and really geared towards uh, roofers. Okay, just go to go.roofingsites.com or use the QR code that is showing on your screen right now. Let me give that a second to let y'all do that. Oh, by the way, go there. I'm going to send it to you for free. Okay, I'm going to give you a complete copy for free. Um, I do this as part of my big, hairy, audacious goal, which is to double the size of 100 roofing companies before 2028. This is one of the ways that that I am doing that. I'm giving this book away for free to any roofing company owner that wants to learn their own how to do digital marketing for their, their own company. Okay, so what what now? All right, if you're tired of wasting time and money with ineffective marketing, chasing your tail. You need a system that makes helps make more sales. You'd love to know how all this stuff works. However, if you're busy, you'd rather have someone do that for you. Let us help you book a strategy session with me. Just go to roofingsites.com forward slash schedule to schedule a time to go over all of your marketing. I will audit every single bit of your marketing that I know of right now of how to get to uh, online. And I'll show you where the holes are in your online marketing and get you to where you can get more leads and sales today, tomorrow, the next year, because our goal again is to help you double the size of your company. And the way to do that is to get your marketing right. Okay. All right. Hopefully this was uh, valuable enough for y'all. And uh, let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. All right. Well, thank you all for coming to the webinar and we're just going to wrap it up at this point. Thanks for showing up. Bye y'all.